Well, after I graduated from Principia College in Elsa, Illinois, every young man who was physically uh, capable had to go into the military service for two years or more. Mm -hmm. And so as I graduated as an English major from Principia College, and I knew full well that to be a college professor, which was my thought at the time, I'd have to get a doctorate degree, and that seemed like a long way off because I had to do my military service. So I volunteered to go into the Navy, and I applied for officer candidate school. And I passed the test, the physical and the other te academic test. And so uh, I graduated in June of 1959 from the college. And I had a summer job already lined up, so I was scheduled to go into the Navy program at the end of August of mm -hmm. 1959. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, graduated from that, and I was assigned to a Navy cruiser, which is a big fighting ship. Mm -hmm. It's the next size smaller than a battleship and much bigger than a, cru a destroyer. Well, this ship was 770 feet long and 70 wow. feet wide and weighed 17,500 pounds. Wow. Tons. What was the name of it? Do you remember? USS Northampton. Oh. And it had the hull number of number one in the U.S. Navy. So what is that? Which meant that it was, Me. there had been, f I think, four other USS Northamptons preceding it. Oh, okay. The U.S. Navy was formed about the time of the Revolutionary War, huh. so there were other Northamptons that oh, okay. preceded it, mm -hmm. and, the, and the one that preceded the ship I was on was sunk in the South Pacific during World War II. Glad you weren't on that one. And uh, <laughs> then they built the next Northampton, which is the one I served on, and which was launched around, I think it was 1944-45, and uh, I, s I served on it for three years. It was a great ship. And for the first two years, that ship was the flagship for the U.S. Atlantic Fleet. All the Navy ships of the United States that were in the Atlantic Fleet were under an admiral who used our ship as his headquarters. Hmm. So it was called a flagship, which meant that it flew the flag of the admiral of the Atlantic Fleet. Oh, okay. So it was a very interesting assignment. I bet. And, uh, who was, was the admiral? Well, there were many different admirals, but one of the admirals was Admiral McCain, and he was the father of Senator John McCain. Oh my gosh, huh. And he was the admiral during some of the times we were in the most sensitive activities that we had. This was during the, what they call the Cold War, when the, mm -hmm. the Russians or the Soviet Union and the United States were in a very tense situation with nuclear weapons on both sides by thousands and thousands of nuclear weapons. And we were afraid that Russians might someday try to attack the United States, and the Russians were afraid we might attack them. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very tense period of time. The last year I was on the ship, the ship went into the shipyard to be uh, fitted with um, uh, some newer guns and also to be uh, equipped to accommodate the President of the United States if he had to escape from Washington. And so we became the secret escape ship for John F. Kennedy. Oh my gosh. And uh, it was very interesting duty. And we couldn't be, that last year, we couldn't be out in Atlantic. We had to be close to Washington, D.C. Well, a ship of our size couldn't get up the Potomac River. Uh, to Washington, <laughs> but so we had to cruise around the Chesapeake Bay. Now, did everyone and, on the ship know that you were the? Yes. We okay. Did. Okay. I didn't know if it was kind of. But scary. we had to be within an hour's helicopter flight from Washington D.C. so that they could fly the president and the ah. Joint Chiefs of Staff or the leaders of the Senate and Congress, whoever they decided to bring out, so that they could they could command our military forces around the world from the, at the ship. And we had the capability with the communications equipment on the ship to command the military forces of the United States um, the anywhere in no, the world. Mm -hmm. So one of the fringe benefits of that experience is that the President Kennedy several times was on board the ship. And one of those occasions, he told the captain of our ship, 
that he'd like to have dinner with the younger officers because mm -hmm. President Kennedy during World War II had been a young naval officer on a patrol boat that was blown up and he was saved. But uh, so he had an interest in young naval officers. And so I was one of, I think it was around 35 young officers who had dinner with the president. Wow. I wasn't at his table, I was in the same room with him. Uh -huh. And after dinner, he said a few remarks to our group of young officers. So. Did you get to yeah, shake his hand or anything, or get a picture? Uh, I didn't get a picture of him, but on another occasion when he was on board the ship, uh, he wanted to review the fleet, and uh, no president had reviewed the, the U.S. naval fleet since FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, had done it at some point, and I don't know when that was but uh, in the late 1930s or maybe the beginning of the Second World War. <laughs> so President Kennedy wanted to do that, and so he stayed on our ship for the night, and he had many leaders of our government, like he had members of the Joint Chief of Staff, military leaders, had senators, high-ranking senators from the Armed Services Committee, and oh. uh, I was assigned, along with other young na naval officers, to be hosts or escorts to these VIP people, hmm. and so Pretty I was as, well. I was assigned to a United States senator who was, I think, head of the Armed Services Activities in the Senate, hmm. and uh, so I was his host. And my job was to make sure if he wanted to see the boiler room on the ship, or he wanted to get up to the bridge of the ship, uh, I could take him there. And I, if he needed anything, I was kind of his. Butler, or this uh, man in waiting, Personal and, system, uh, huh? and which was easy duty as it turned out. But uh, the key event was to review the whole fleet, and I'd never seen anything like this before, and it was all exciting. I was a very young officer, and so on the morning that we we're going to review the fleet, um, I met the senator and escorted him up to the deck of the of the ship where all the officials were going to congregate and then there were going to be two columns of naval ships coming at us and we were going to go down the middle mm -hmm. and there was everything from aircraft carriers to submarines to destroyers oh, to wow. minesweepers. I believe it was 45 to 60 ships. It was a enormous. Now I've never seen that many Navy ships at sea at one time. It was very impressive. and. As I was walking up with the senator, we walked past the suite or the stateroom, where, which was the, normally the admiral's stateroom, but they turned it over to the president for the night, and President Kennedy had stayed there the night. But well, we're walking by, and the door to this uh, stateroom for the president opened up, and out stepped President Kennedy about three, four feet in front of us as we're walking up. Oh my gosh. Well, the senator knew him very well. And of course, as a young naval officer, I snapped to yeah. attention, saluted the president. Good morning, Mr. President. He saluted me back. Wow. And uh, then he asked the senator, he said, uh, well, let's just go up and watch this review of the fleet together. And my assignment was to stick to the senator. <laughs> and so I stood your there job. <laughs> as the senator and the president of the United States watched this enormous procession of these mighty naval ships come streaming by us, and wow. I was there six, eight, ten feet behind them watching this whole oh, procession, which was an absolutely amazing experience. So, and uh, and then uh, I was discharged in early. 1963, and as you know, on November 22nd of that year, the president was assassinated. Mm -hmm. And so I've had a very sad but warm spot for the president, Kennedy, because of that experience mm -hmm. and uh, some other recollections I have of that experience. 